Um, we are here with uh, the Berlin School class with about 40 participants and we had the joy uh, to have Jeff Jarvis with us who is a member of our uh, creative faculty but he's also a professor here uh, at uh, CUNY Graduate School of Journalism. Uh, Jeff is the creator of the famous Dell blog, we might talk <laughs> a bit about that. Uh, his uh, blog is Bus Machine, um, you also can uh, get in, in, in touch with him uh, over Twitter. Um, Jeff wrote um, What Would Google Do, this mm -hmm. wonderful book, where I take the wisdom from um, um, a brand is not a product, but it is a service today, mm -hmm. and uh, some more. And um, yeah, let's uh, let me ask uh, 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 you a little bit uh, about what we talked today. Uh, mass is dead, and um, uh, let's say mass communication, mass products, mass manufacturing. Mm -hmm. The world is different. And your insight comes actually from the world of blogs, that there is a, a totally different world uh, these days out there. It's Raymond Williams, the sociologist, who said that there are no masses, only ways to see people as masses. And I think the change we're actually going through in the world right now is much bigger than just a media change. We are moving from the industrial economy to whatever follows. And we don't yet know fully what that shape of that new world is. I was at a panel last night at the Wall Street Journal and one of the editors there said, beware anyone who says we're in a new economy. And I said, beware an editor who's covering finance who doesn't believe that we're in a new economy. We are in a very new economy and we're just beginning to see the first shades of it. I, the, the internet is like, a, like an avalanche that's coming down the mountain and it's first hitting those things that are closest to it. Media is very close, but it will hit everything. It's changed retail completely. It will change real estate as a result. Uh, it's going to change government and education. Look at the fact that you have a brand new school that can start and be worldwide, and it's possible because of the kind of connections that even the Internet makes possible, right? So I believe that we are changing the world completely and utterly, or it's being changed around us, and that what we have to do in business is to figure out where the opportunities are there. And frankly, the opportunities often come in Schubert's uh, creative destruction. And we'll see that some things will die and some things will go away, but there'll be incredible new opportunities, new efficiencies, new ways to do things. I don't think it'll be mass anymore. There'll still be big things. Google is huge. Walmart in the U.S. is huge. Amazon is huge. I, I see the world in three layers coming up. There's a platform layer. There's an entrepreneurial layer on top of that where you can build very inexpensively at very low cost and risk on top of the platform. And then there's a network layer that puts together these entrepreneurial ventures in critical mass. So you say things like glam.com that put together a thousand sites, make a critical mass, go to advertisers with that, and come up to the advertiser and say, listen, you don't have the mass of television anymore, but here is a mass of people, but not just a mass. I've now defined them in very uh, specific ways, and you can be much more efficient than you used to be. So why is it for existing companies, media companies, so difficult to understand that and to adjust and come up with new products. Why do others have to do that that sometimes don't have even the expertise of, of running a media company? I've come to realize lately, I think, that the future of media is entrepreneurial rather than institutional. I worked for the institutions. I loved the institutions. I worked for newspapers and magazines. And I, and I spent the 15 years since the creation of the consumer internet, commercial internet, the browser world, um, trying to help them figure out this world. And I don't want to say that I've given up, but I think some of them have. The problem is this. What we tend to talk about in this discussion these days is revenue streams, two of them. Advertising, and that's going down. It's, it's, it's highly competitive now. And the idea of charging people, which I don't think is going to work, but that's another topic. What we don't talk about as much is the cost structure of media now. And the cost structure is extremely high. It could be because we ran gigantic monopolies. It was wonderful when it lasted. It's over now. And so the problem becomes the old companies have incredible pain to shrink down to what the new world looks like. 
And it's a lot easier to build from the ground up to that new world. And so I understand that now. If you had this gigantic, powerful newspaper or magazine or network, for you to shrink down involves incredible pain in the number of jobs that lost, incredible pain in terms of the cultural shift. Meanwhile, there's some kid in college or in a, in a garage somewhere who can look at this new world, who can build on the platform of Google or Amazon or eBay or Etsy or things like that and can create a whole new company out of nowhere a lot faster, easier, cheaper than the big old company and who also understands this new world. I've seen with our students at Graduate School of Journalism, when I came through in the business, when you were 21 years old, age was something you got over. Today, or youth was something you got over, I should say. Today, youth is an asset. Yeah. Because if you're young, you understand how this new world operates. Yeah. And the big old companies don't. Yeah. When Steve Palmer gave uh, a big appearance in, uh, in Cannes last year, and he said, you know, for me there are three things coming together. If you want to build a brand, uh, if, you want, if you have a product, you want to build a brand, you need buzz. So, How? Well, the buzz is controlled. I hear all kinds of brands say, well, we're going to be viral. Well, that's not up to them. It's up to the public to decide what is viral. Yeah. Buzz is possible, but it's not in your control. When I wrote about Dell on my blog and the problems I had, I was not by any means an expert or, or an influencer, but the message that I wrote at the time was Dell sucks resonated. Other people grabbed that message and they, and they sent it around by blogs and Twitter didn't even exist yet. Now a message like this travels like that on Twitter. At the same count, Dell turned around and it learned the lessons and it saw that by blogging themselves and talking themselves, fixing bloggers' problems, enabling their public, their consumers to collaborate with them, that there was incredible value to be had there and they've really improved a lot in that way. But the buzz is no longer in your control. The idea that you can go and buy a lot of advertising time and create buzz, bullshit. But it seems that uh, uh, there is a lot of buzz around Apple. Let, let's say uh, it seems that Apple has somewhat control of it because when they bring out a new product, I mean, people line up Apple uh, in front of us, yes. and, and any other marketer would dream of having this situation. So and, 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 I, and I love my mm -hmm. iPhone, yes. Yeah, I have my too. Macintosh. Apple, as I say, and what will Google do? Apple is the great exception to all the rules. Uh, Apple does advertise because it makes that product and its users cooler. Apple controls things and doesn't believe in openness. Uh, Apple really has... Uh, I don't want to say it's an old way to do it, but they can get away with all this because they're so damned good. I asked Rashad Tabakawala, who's another member of the faculty of the school, about this when I wrote What Will Google Do? And he said, I thought that Apple was the grand exception. It was the anti-Google. And he said, well, no, actually not. Because Apple, like Google, makes you feel powerful. Right? When you hold this, this zen-like iPhone, you, you have some sense of power in the world. When you look at the Google front page and you see that behind that little box is the entire world of digital knowledge, it makes you powerful, it makes you godlike, it makes you sexy as a result. Yeah. And so actually Rashad argues that, that Apple and Google are more alike than I thought. Yeah. Well, I mean, when, when, when you want to create a future for your enterprise today, you got to focus on a, being at a certain competitive place. Mm -hmm. What would be your general advice to people today, given all the technology that is out there, the communication you come again? What is your advice? In Imagine your own destruction, because someone else is. And I'm not saying that you will be destroyed or you should be destroyed, but if you don't face that honestly and directly and bluntly, there's a good chance you'll lose, because there's someone out there, there's a Craigslist who can create a way to bring buyers and sellers directly together without the need of newspapers. Yeah. There's uh, all kinds of new opportunities for people to create yeah. new direct relationships. The internet abhors middlemen. The inter internet abhors opaqueness. The internet loves transparency and direct connections. Mm -hmm. it's a, it's, the internet is not a medium, it's a connection machine. And if you stand in the way of that, you'll be in trouble. So the, the challenge is to sit back and say, How is some kid going to challenge me? I better build myself into that or I'll lose. Now, when it comes 
to real business collaboration is the key today. What is your advice in how to deal with clients and partners? I think collaboration is even bigger than clients and partners. It is your entire public. Uh, if you look at what Dell did, they started the Dell Idea Storm, and Michael Dell said that a company the size of Dell cannot be run on the ideas of three people, or even as employees. It has to be run on the ideas of the public. Uh, Starbucks came along and copied the same platform from Salesforce and started my Starbucks idea. Best Buy is doing this. The U.S. government is doing this as well. I think you have to open up and be collaborative. We're going to talk here at the, uh, at the talk tonight about, about beta, or my British friends would say beta, and that's really about saying that when, when, when Google releases a product, it says this product is unfinished, it's imperfect. When they say that, they're not just making excuses, they are making a call to collaboration. They're inviting their public to tell them how to make this product Microsoft better. Microsoft 7 ran a whole campaign about it. Yeah, I'm not sure that, that they really campaign. meant it the same way, yes. Okay. They may yeah. believe a little bit, okay. yes, that's the ethic of the age. Yeah. And, and the ethic the is idea. that you collaborate, yes. Yeah. And so, when you do that, when you put out a beta, you are automatically collaborating and you're being transparent. You're saying what we know and what we don't know. Yeah. And I think it's very important. But if you take your product, uh, your quality, in order that it's fit for the market of tomorrow, let's say, what, what is your advice? <sighs> it's, listen, not everything can be a beta. Uh, I don't want to fly in a jet that's run by a beta engine yeah, yeah. or drive a beta car. Nonetheless, I think that the more that you can listen and update to your public, to your customers, uh, and learn from them and do what they want. Now, neither is this democracy, pure democracy, because that would be chaos. You still have the responsibility as an author or a designer or a creator to create the great product. The key is now that you can listen in new ways. If you go to a restaurant, I imagine in my book the googly restaurant, and the key to that, I think, is that the, the chef should say, the people who are in my room are smart. They're smart to come here because they know my food is good. They know things. How do I listen to them in new ways? How do I find the way that they can suggest the way I should make the dish? Now, if they all went in the kitchen, chaos. But if the chef learns two or three new things to try, the chef is smarter for it. Every company can and should do that. Uh, in a creative company, uh, creative company communication company, uh, people is key. Mm -hmm. If you're the creative leader, what's your advice? What's, what's important in leading creative people? I think that's very hard. It's even hard for Google. Google's 20% rule, I think, goes some distance toward that to say that, that we should invent and try to do new things. Uh, Google insists that um, the idea is more important than who has it. Companies say things like that, I'm not sure. It's very hard to maintain, um, I, I work with a lot of startups, and at some point in their life cycle, yeah. they get to the point where they say, Nick Denton, who started Gawker uh, in his last company, I was on the board of Moreover, he said one day, he denies saying this, but I remember him saying this, he said, I can't afford brainstorming anymore. Yeah. Uh, you do get to that point in a company where you have to shut down all the imagination and just do something extremely well. But you can't shut down the imagination because someone else, is, even in a new company, is imagining what you're doing and you have to keep that going. So you have to have a process of constantly reimagining what you're doing, right. asking what you're doing. That is the hardest thing of all. Yeah. Well, um, two more questions. One, um, you know, this, in this business you have to be really very alert, uh, to be very awake of what's going on. Yes. You have to be a rebel and so and you are. Uh, so how, how do you lead yourself? Well, that's where, as you said, I learned a lot in blogging. Uh, I started blogging out of September 11th, 2001. I was at the World Trade Center and I thought I would do it for a few weeks because I had more to say about the experience. It immediately taught me a new relationship with the public. Uh, when I blogged something and, and, and people in Los Angeles and San Francisco wrote about it and blogged back and linked to me I realized we were in a distributed conversation. It happened in different places in different times, but that was the exact opposite of how media operates, the one-way pipe. And to this day, I'm still by no means believe that I've understood the full impact of the link. And it's about constantly trying to throw out your assumptions about how our world operated and see the new possibilities. 
And the truth is, it gave me a second childhood. We both have gray hair, right? But, but I'm, I, I, I feel like a child on the Internet, and I am a child on the Internet. We all are, and that's one of the great joys. Well, you've also become a great thought leader of the yeah. industry, and you're very communicative. Yeah. How come? To How a fault. That happen? Um, I think the blogging again did that. Yeah. Where, where uh, I, you know, I've been a writer, I've been a publisher in that sense, but now suddenly I could just say what I thought and I could find myself in these conversations and in those conversations I learn. So actually since I wrote the book I've been blogging less and it hurts me. Yeah. I need to do this so that I'm, uh, every time I do this someone, uh, the public is going to edit me, they're going to correct me, they're going to push me, uh, they're going to uh, answer questions I have and the relationship is incredibly valuable and that's what keeps me young in this world, that and teaching students. Well, on Sunday we will see each other in Munich. Yeah, A DLD? DLD. Yeah. And then you uh, move uh, over to the, the snow area. To Davos. Davos. Yep. Uh, what do you expect this year from Davos? I'm not sure. Last uh, Two years ago in Davos, they saw the crisis coming. Last year at Davos, I said that I, I asked when I got there, are we, are we among the, the problem or the solution? And I believed that we were among the problem. Uh, this year, I'm not sure what we'll see. I think we'll see uh, people who um, are the powerful, and the question is, are they truly being held to account? Are they truly making change enough? And I'm not sure they are. Well, let's hope Michael. Uh, Thank you. that Good luck. we can continue kicking. Yes, I hope so. While you're doing that by creating a new school and new people, and I think yeah. that's where the future is. It's so great to have you here. Thank uh, you, sir. Thanks, Jim. Good.